Hey my fellow strangers, hope you're doing well. In this video, I'm going to share the process of the pocket jacket that I made. The pattern for the jacket is available since it was requested. If you want more code tutorials, comment and share the video. Now let's begin. These are the tools that I've used. Everything will be linked in the description box. For the jacket, you will need your fashion, lining and inner fabric. And my only concern for that, I was able to see through the white fabric. You will also need fiber fill and stuffing. And I'm using my pillow because I was almost out of stuffing. As some of you may know, I also made a jacket for my mom. These fabric look the same, but it's actually not. If you buy fabric, be sure that it is waterproof or resistant. Here you can see the difference between the two. To begin, I make notches in the pattern pieces. Then I cut a pattern on fabric. I use the same pocket pattern for the fiber fill, but I do fold the seam allowance inwards for the fiber fill. Here is an overview of the lining pieces. I'm marking the wrong sides of the fabric so that you can see what the wrong sides are. Use the front lining pattern to place the markings for the inside pocket. Overlock the edges besides the top one. This is optional and I'm using an overcasting foot for this, which is a very useful tool to have. Before you um, iron, make sure to test your iron settings on the fabric. I'm trying to iron the edges to see if that would be better. Turns out not to be, so do the top first and then the rest of the outer edges. So double fold the top edge and then the remaining edges. Then you can sew along the folded edge to secure it in place. Measure the velcro and trim. Mark the velcro placement on the wrong side of the pocket. Sew it in place, count your stitches for accuracy. I went over it twice. And here you can see how it should look. Place the other velcro on top, align the pocket between the markings that you have made earlier on the front lining and then make a new marking for the other velcro to be sewn on. Then you can sew the velcro in place and be sure to count the stitches. Place the inside pocket and top stitch in place, leave the top side open. Here is how it should look after and be sure not to catch everything else like I did. Align the front facing on the front lining right sides together. I'm using clips to hold everything together. Sew the pieces with a straight stitch. This is how it should look after and repeat for the other side. Then take the two front panels and back, align the shoulder and side seams together, pin together and sew. Press the seam allowance of the front facing and front lining, facing the center front and then you can press the remaining seams open. Fold the sleeve in half, sew, then press the seam. Then with right sides together, align the sleeve to the armhole and sew. And there is no ease in the sleeve because there is enough room to move your arm around. And here is how it should look after. 
Now sew the sides of the bottom hem facing, right sides touching, then press the seam open again. Here I'm just chasing the thread because from now on I'm only going to continue with the blue fabric. So if you use a contrasting fabric as well, be sure to do the same. Top stitch the front panel and the seam allowance will be secured on the other side. Here you can see it from up close. Pin the bottom facing to the bottom edge of the lining piece and sew it together like so. Be sure also to add the collar to the neckline with the right sides together. I didn't add the collar here because I needed more to time to brainstorm at this time. So that's why I don't have it. So set it aside for now since we're going to move on with the smaller panels. I'm marking the wrong sides again so that you can see which is the wrong side. I'm gonna start with the belt loop. Divide the belt loop lengthwise in three sections. Feel free to press it in place if you would like. Then sew along the edge. Now I'm pinning the pocket. Right side is facing in. Then I'm adding the fiber fill with the two layers, readjusting the clip so that all layers are pinned together. So around the edge, leaving one side open. I'm sewing with the fiber fill facing down so that I have a clear vision where I'm sewing. Repeat the previous steps with the pocket flaps. Trim off the corners close to the stitch line. I like to use fray check for on the corners, but it is optional, you don't have to do it. I've left it dry for an hour or so and then I flip the pockets right side out. Use something sharp to poke out the corners so that they are nice and beautiful. Press the seams open and pay attention on what I'm doing here. So I'm pulling the seam back to press it open. After I push it back to the edge and press it flat again. Top stitch the flaps. You can do all four sides by the way. I did only three but you can do four. For the pocket itself, double fold and sew close to the edge. Here you can see how it should look at the moment. Cut off the velcro base of the pocket width. I mark the location of the velcro on the flaps. Sew the velcro in place the same way as before. Be sure to count your stitches, go slow and steady and do not lose your count like I did. So it's a little bit messy, but I don't care. Then repeat the same for the pockets. Next up is the belt, pin it all the way right sides together, place the fiber fill on top and pin it with the other two layers. Sew the layers together with a straight stitch leaving one short side open. The fiber started to shift while I was doing this so I had to trim off the excess. Flip the belt right side out. I'm using the flat side of the stick to prevent the fabric from ripping while I'm doing this.
Then I'm using the sharp side to point out the corners so that it looks nice, crispy and smooth. I repeat the previous steps with a zipper panel, but this time you want to leave one long side open. Flip right side out and point out the corners the same way as before. Press the seam open of the zipper panel and belt. I'm using the same method as before. Top stitch and sew across the panel to create a quilting effect and you can also use a walking foot for this since a walking foot is for quilting. The space between the stitches is about a half a centimeter. With the belt I did the outer side only because I was tired of doing that shit that I did before. And I'm sewing less than a centimeter from the edge. Thread the belt through the buckle, double fold the raw edge. Before you position the belt, lower the feeding dog to prevent it from damaging. Sew it in place along the folded edge. Moving on with the main pieces, I'm starting by placing the markings on the inner and outer pieces and I'm connecting the markings together. This will be a guideline. Place the inner piece on top with the wrong sides facing in and that is also for the outer fabric. Pin the two layers together and sew along the guideline. Next, sew the outer edge, leaving one side open and pay attention where I show where you need to sew. I sewed less than a centimeter from the edge, it was about seven millimeters. Place one front panel on the back and sew the back side and shoulder seams together. Fill the front with stuffing, wear a mask unless you want to breathe in all the dust and if you're using a pillow you don't want to breathe the dust mites. Place the pocket on the marking and top stitch the pocket in place. I also changed the stitch to a bigger stitch length so it's moving forward faster. Also take your time, you don't want to mess this up because you don't want to have marks in the jacket if you're using a rather resistant uh, fabric. Then sew the flap, double fold the top edge and sew it in place. Lower the feeding things to prevent the fabric from damaging. Once it is in the right position, turn it back on and sew the flap in place using the same stitch length. After, stuff the remaining pieces with stuffing and close off the open side.
sew the belt loop in the side seam, fold the ends inward, go back and forth with a few stitches to sew it in place. You can also do it uh, directly in the side seam if you would like, which I did with my mom's jacket before. Set it in the sleeve in the armhole, use clips to hold everything in place and then you can sew it all the way around. Here I'm adding the stuffing to the collar. As mentioned before, I didn't figure out what to do, but at this moment I figured out what I had to do. The next day I sew the collar onto the neckline. It's exactly the same process with the lining, of course, with right sides together. So now I'm gonna sew along the bottom for a professional look. Mine is a whole mess. I wanted to make a extra channel before the stuffing, but I didn't feel like doing this, but I changed my mind at the last second. So now I did it anyways. So be sure to make an extra channel for that if you want to do this as well here you can see how messy it is so now we're gonna attach the zipper the teeth should be facing the pockets or basically the outside of the jacket clip and sew in place i'm sewing two millimeters away from the zipper teeth then repeat the same for the other side Then sew the zipper panel on top. When you sew, don't sew too close to the zipper stitch line to move the zipper easily up and down, which I did, so be sure to not to sew too close. I would say two millimeters away again. Then I'm trimming the excess of the zipper panel. To remove the zipper teeth, I use these two, basically this one. Uh, what you definitely should do is to remove the teeth that is hanging around the stitch neckline. Cut the zipper teeth at an angle. Be aware that the zipper teeth will be lying around the room. Uh, I did the rest off cam. Sew the cuff in half. Measure the elastic around your head and trim the desired length. I think mine was about 21 centimeters. Next, sew the cuff around the bottom of the sleeve. Then fold the cuff in half and sew again, but this time you want to leave an opening for the elastic. And there are other ways to do this, so if this is not your preferred method, then do your preferred method. Use a tool to feed the elastic through the cuff. And here I'm just feeling to see if the elastic wasn't twisted while I was doing this. Then I'm sewing the ends of the elastic together using the zigzag stitch. Then I've closed off the opening. Now it's time to assemble the outer and lining pieces together. First, I've sewed along the bottom edge. There are, by the way, other ways to do it, but I was wondering if I could do it this way that I had in mind so that I didn't have to turn the jacket right side out at the last step. So now match the sleeve ends together, pin it around to hold it in place, and sew all the way around. And while you do this, make sure that the sleeves are not twisted. So double check that before you sew these two layers together.
So the seam allowance of the lining and the outer pieces together with a few stitches as shown. Align the center front together and that is the side without the zipper panel. Start sewing from the bottom to the end of the neck collar on the side with the zipper panel. Fold the zipper and the panel out of the way and sew until the stitch line. Pin the neckline seam allowance of the lining and outer panel together. And I'm doing this wrong in this clip, it should be there. Then sew between the shoulder seams and here you can see it up from close. This is how it should look after. Trim the neckline seam of the lining and outer panel at the corners. After, turn the coat right side out as shown. Grab the underarm seam and secure it with a few stitches. Here I'm cutting two small pieces about two by six centimeters and I'm sewing this in the seam of the shoulder seams. Instead of six, it would be better to do four or five. Fold the front facing seam inwards and pin it in place exactly on the stitch line of the zipper. Make sure that the pin doesn't go all the way through the coat. Top stitch along the center front using a zipper foot. Again, I change the stitch length to three millimeters Once you're done, this is how it should look. If you have questions, let me know, share and like the video if you want to see more coat tutorials. What type of coat should I make next?